I now call to order the New Carlisle City Council meeting, January 22nd, 2019 at 7 p.m. Mrs. Berner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. Fantastic. We're going to go to our invocation by Council Member Bill Will you please bow your heads? Our Father, take humble acceptance of this group and guide us in our thoughts and what we do here tonight. Please also take under your wing our first responders, our fire department, our sheriff's deputies, and guide us through what we hope to do. Amen. Amen. Do you mind joining us for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag at the back? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do you have an agenda? Yeah. Oh. Action on the minutes for 1719. Motion accepted the minutes for 1719. Fantastic. Second. Jumped again. You did. Miss, Mr. Lowry. Mr. Lowry. Yes, sorry. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Oh, abstain. <laughs> Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Accepted 5-0. Fantastic. Communications none tonight. Mr. Bridge for our city manager's report. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members of public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. Uh, starting off the report is our finance discussion with our finance director, Ms. Watson. Hi, good evening. You'll see in front of you a group of new reports. The first uh, page is a little familiar to you. I kept the format a little the same. So December's total revenue was $469,008.92, and December's total expenses was $509,732.24. You can see our year-to-date total of revenue was $5,640,853.13, and year-to-date total expenses was $5,167,146.93. In this packet, the reports you're looking at, they're, they're a little more um, streamlined and easier to read. The first report is your bank report. It tells right now all the banks and um, our month-to-date revenue, our expenses, and the ending <coughs> balances on those. The second page is once again your um, little uh, thermo chart with what has come into the general fund for 2018. Those are the totals for 2018 for your general fund as far as revenue and expenses. Then the next um, report is the statement of cash position with month to date totals and that will give you every fund that we have, their beginning balance, the net revenue month to date, year to date revenue, and same for expenses and then your ending balances. Then your next report is your check report by check number that you usually receive every month. So you'll be receiving that still. And then the next report is the gross income, the CCA collections for the year. Um, what we've collected uh, for the year. Um, our, um, and then what we collected for municipal tax, for a net profit tax. That's for 2018. There's a little difference in what was reported before because at the end of the year we have to do an adjustment because during the year they give us estimates during the year and then we have to do a little bit of adjusting some totals. And then the final report you have tonight is uh, the pool report. I want to explain that up just a little bit. Our revenue to date for the pool was $78,916.11. Our expenses was 86682 but that does include the heater that we purchased for the year, that big amount, 11000 So I have the total that if, if we keep the 11000 in there, we um, have a loss of 77 66 35 but if you take that out, I just wanted to show you the pool did, would have made money. So we're not going to buy a heater every year, but we're on the upswing. Um, and then if you want to take into account some inventory, um, Right now I have $450 that we have left in inventory, but April just informed me that it's a little higher, so I'll change that for on, on my permanent records there. But basically, if we hadn't had to buy the heater this year, the pool would have made about $4,500 for the year, so that's pretty good. 
And that's it for this year. Uh, I mean, these reports. <laughs> if you have any questions about these or would like to see different information, just let me know. I can adjust or get more information. Or if you have any questions about these, just let me know. Council, any questions? Nope. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Watson. Fantastic. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Watson. <coughs> Moving on with the city manager report, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Ms. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. I oh, just have one bullet, po one bullet point item under service departments. Uh, snow removal is in full swing. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, pretty much for the city, when the snow exceeds two inches or we get a plowable snow, we'd like for most people to be able to utilize their garages, driveways, whenever they can. It allows us, especially in the Northwoods area where the streets are really narrow, to plow those curb to curb. Um, we do not take our medium-sized truck up there anymore with the 10-foot plow. It just won't fit because people keep parking further away from the curb. So we're just asking if they could uh, utilize more of their driveways when we got to go out and plow. 2018-2019 uh, various road projects. Gilwood Drive reconstruction project. The 300 block of Gilwood Drive will be reconstructed this year. Uh, engineers have completed a survey on the project and they're in the middle of the design phase uh, right now. 2019 wastewater plant influent building upgrade project. We did have a kickoff meeting on 1212 with the engineers uh, about for the designing of the project. And it's still, we're in about the eight, eight week time frame for getting those uh, plans ready. And then um, wh while this was in the middle of this, something that happened in the last month or so, we did end up having the one, uh, we have two influent pumps. We are going to replace both. Well, we have one out to try and get some work done in the temporary because we're looking at probably August when this project will be completed with actual construction phase. Um, while this pump has been out, we have been informed that they're having issues trying to find parts for this pump to keep us going. Well, meanwhile, our second pump is having issues now. Um, so these are from the 70s. They've, had, they've been rebuilt before. Um, but we're having issues. So we do have on site right now a pump out of, uh, out of Cincinnati by Allied that is there on standby um, if our pump fails. So we do have backup. We will always be able to pump uh, sewer. Um, what I have looked into and what will be coming to you, uh, I will be drafting an emergency ordinance for Mr. Bridge to pass through Lynette and Council for me to bypass uh, the bidding process for one influent pump uh, so we can put a rush because uh, it's 12 weeks turnaround time for a new pump. Mm -hmm. So the other pump will go along with the project as planned. However, the ORC allows me in an emergency situation uh, with some description to bypass the bidding and do a direct select turnkey project. And that is what I'm going to do to get this one pump in uh, and get this on order. Um, so that will be coming to you at next council meeting. And then also this pump that we have on site won't be as critical because we're spending about $5,000 a month to have this pump just sit on site for us right now. So it'll be probably in our best interest to at least get one brand new uh, pump put in and in that way it's not as critical to possibly have this second pump just sitting on site for as a backup. Um, so there'll be more information on which I'll definitely get out and I'm sure with Mr. Bridge we'll be ready to answer any questions that you may have as, as I get some things drafted. And then the last thing, traffic signal upgrade project, we're still trying to finish up right away acquisition at some of the corners uh, to acquire land to finish up this project. Uh, we are about done, and I think it's June is when plans have to be completed. And we're still on for a spring 2020 construction. And that is all I have in the, uh, for my report. I can entertain any questions on this report or anything else with the service departments. Council. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Kirko. What uh, do you estimate this cost for that pump to be? Uh, we just got the estimate in yes or Friday, and I think <coughs> this pump is about seventy-five thousand. And we have it budgeted. This will be a cash uh, part of the um, project, but yeah, um, the rest of it we were already going to get some short-term loans, but we're just going to have to cash front this pro part of the project and then um, go further on down the road. Okay. Thank you, sir. Fantastic. Yeah. Mr. Lowry. Uh, Mr. Kicker, just out of curiosity, you said that the pumps that you're in the process of replacing are from the 70s, but they've been rebuilt. So what's the time, like what's the lifespan, an average on a new pump? Uh, it, it just depends. Uh, you, uh, some pumps are 7 to 10 years. 
but that's typical maintenance. You might get 15. You just never know with wastewater. Water industry is a little bit different. You usually can prolong those, but wastewater, you just don't know. They all serve a different purpose, so they're all different lifespans. Thank you. Mm. <coughs> Mr. Kitka, I want to definitely you know, pass this along to your uh, guys in the road crew. I think they did a fantastic job over the last two snows <laughs> that we've had. They did the best they could on Saturday night. Uh, you know, uh, I think it was fantastic just to see the roads waking up and going through and seeing all the roads being done up and looking nice for, uh, for the day. So I had no complaints uh, brought to my attention, so I thought it was fantastic. Pretty quiet out in the middle of the night, isn't it? It is. <laughs> so, Council, anything else? Mr. Kitko? Nope. Thank, Thank you, me. Mr. Kitko. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kitko. Moving on with the city manager report, our fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Trustee. Mayor, council, and citizens, for the month of December, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 66 EMS calls in the city, 16 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to eight fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to fit Medic 52 being on a response. We answered two mutual aid calls to Pike Township and two to Bethel Clark. In the month of December, we had zero overdoses. The division responded in for a total volume of 2018, 1,301 runs for the city and 144 in Elizabeth Township. Uh, last meeting, we talked about the county getting going in on the purchase of Mark's radios for the uh, with the city of Springfield. Uh, with that going on and that went through, it passed. Uh, we received what we were what was purchased for the city of New Kalal by the county. Uh, we were. They purchased for us six new mobile radios for the vehicles and 20 new handheld radios, which are these with the speaker mics. Uh, they also purchased 50 pagers and installation, tuning, programming, everything uh, to a dollar amount of $96,629.10 to the city, and that's zero cost to us. It would have taken us anywhere from it would take us anywhere from five to ten years budget money to accomplish this, and the driving force that was allowed us to be able to do this was our foresight of last year of swapping from the city of Springfield dispatching to the county dispatching because they only bought radios for the departments that they dispatch for. Hmm. So, and this will also, the big thing that this also does, it will take us completely off of the VHF system. We'll no longer use VHF for anything. We'll be totally marked all the way across the board with everything in the department. Council, any questions? Ms. Chief Trustee, I have one question. Uh, I don't think it's a problem anymore, but when we first transferred to Marks with the Sheriff's Department, there were a lot of problems. I'm assuming all those are bugs are worked out and we don't have them anymore. We really don't have a whole lot. With okay. with this system, every time you bring something more on into the Mark system, you have that that chance of having more problems. But the county seeing this coming, they've already purchased another tower okay. in the county okay. uh, to help with that. Uh, also unlocking some towers. Uh, Miami County was, at one time was a locked system. Uh, and they're no longer locked. They're, it's an open tower system now. Um, so it's, we have, I think we've had maybe one or two times where we caught a busy signal or something, but it's minute. Fantastic. Yeah, because they were there for a minute. When we first got it, uh, deputies would walk in people's houses and they couldn't <laughs> radio out. So I, yeah, it's deputy wise carrying his cell phone with them and texting them, like, hey, I'm okay. The only place so. that we have found in the city that we had a problem getting out, and that was with the Miami County, uh, that, that was before we were on the marks, we was using the Miami County marks, was in the basement of uh, Dayview nursing home down in the old, old part. Oh, wow. But with the new towers coming on board and everything. Plus, with the marks radios or like anything else, there is a self a fail safe system in the radio that where you can swap to a what's called a simplex channel which is radio to radio it doesn't go to the tower then to the radio so if you swap to a simplex channel when you're in a, in a situation like that you can still get communications out of the building to, to the outside thank you mr cop mr trustee yes sir i'd like to thank you and your department for the outstanding job you do trust me i've used you enough and 
they do fine work and I'm proud of them. Thank you, sir. Council, anything else? No. Thank you, Mr. Trustee. Thank you, Chief Trustee. Moving on to city manager report, our police discussion with our police administrator, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, sir. Mayor, council, citizens. In the month of December, files controlled our test 2019. Cause of service, we had 119. Reports taken, there's 27. Assists, we had 43. Criminal arrest, we had 12. Traffic citations, there were 25. Traffic warnings, there were 52. <coughs> Business checks, there was 587. And citizen contacts, there was 694. All in all, December was a really good month for us. Um, we had some issues, but um, it appeared to be down from last year, although I don't have stats because we've changed systems a couple times and looks like we might be changing something again uh, to compare it with but just being up here for eight years uh, the weather was a big factor it was pretty good for us until this past weekend and uh, uh, december looked good now starting in january 2019 the clark, clark county sheriff's department's dare deputies will be instructing the dare curriculum at nuclear elementary school and then instructor Deputy Josh Berner will have six classes on Tuesdays and three classes on Thursdays. And they'll have a, a graduation in May and that'll be in school graduation. Um, if you have any children that's interested in that, uh, that's fifth grade at the school, um, question them about it, ask them about it. Uh, it's a drug prevention awareness program uh, that talks a lot more than about drugs. There's, there's good decision-making skills also involved with that. And then for a note, already in January of 2019, we've had a business that had five vehicle uh, batteries and a catalytic converter stolen. Uh, we pretty sure we know who that is. Thankfully, Deputy Caesar Gonzalez has a good suspect and will be filing charges uh, when he can. So uh, that's common if you leave your cars running. I know it's cold. You want to warm your car up. Make sure you have a, a vision on it uh, so you can see it uh, because people are borrowing cars. And uh, evidently there's money in stealing batteries. So be careful with that. And like always, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Department at 937 328 2560 if you witness anything suspicious and this could be the phone call we need we need to solve a crime and that concludes my report for december thank you council any questions thank you thank you sir <laughs> thank you sergeant underwood and moving on with the city manager report under informational items i have a few things attached some of this i kept over from last council meeting when i was ill i do apologize for having to miss that meeting um, first thing I'd like to discuss is our income tax collections. Um, what I've attached into the packet is our 2017 in income tax collections. And this has it broken in down by each month and the fees that we have to pay. We also followed suit with that with 18 as well, a report like that. I also made another sheet that compares them side to side. Um, so if you look at that one, that's 2018 and 2017 just side by side. But I do want to go back to that 2018 income tax revenue report, which is the second one I, I use as an example. Um, I have comments from the city manager underneath that. Um, I wanted to talk to everyone about that because we're seeing about a 12% increase with our income tax collections from 17, which is very good. Um, however, one of the things I wanted to discuss with council and the citizens is our collection fees. They went up to 90, we collect, we, they charged us $90,000 to collect our income tax. Um, I would like to continue on with CCA for this year because we're already in the 19, but I really do want to watch that fee because if it goes up again next year, clearly the more that we collect, the more that fee is going to be. But if it gets or anywhere between that 110, 120,000 fee, I would look into bringing it back in house and hiring staff. Um, that way we have a position, um, um, we have just have jobs that are available to some of our citizens. But again, if we can do it cheaper, at the, at the end of the day, we want to look at our bottom line. And if we can do it in-house for the cheap, cheaper for the fees that they are charging us, I think it's something we should look into. 
not this year, maybe two years down the road. We do see an increase with them in collections, what we wanted. Uh, I am trying to get a meeting still set with two representatives from, from, from CCA. Some of the questions I want to ask them are about having a bilingual speaker at our events that we do here in the city, and also um, talk about how much they've collected um, based off the federal database. One of the key factors as to why we decided to outsource our income tax collections because they have the ability to cross-check the federal income tax database. We do not have the ability to do that here in New Carlisle. So what that means is they can put person A, the person A file their federal taxes, the person A file their city taxes, and they can tell that by the federal tax filing. Um, I haven't got a report that says we've collected X amount of dollars based off federal, ta uh, federal database checking. So I do have some questions with that. Um, if they're not doing that, it's something that we need to really have a, a really long, hard talk with them about. Um, so far, CCA um, has been doing good to us. Um, so I would like to continue on for at least another year and then see how this, the fee structure goes, see how much they are collecting. Um, but more importantly, um, update council after we have that initial meeting with how they've progressed so far at this point. Any questions on the income tax collections? Council? Okay. Nope. Thank you, okay. Mr. Rich. Thank you. And moving on, uh, we do need a motion to approve. Um, Sue Thompson had got her uh, verification letter in a little late last time, so she wasn't included in that initial uh, uh, appointment of board members. Sue Thompson has been on the tax review board for quite some, some time now. So as the charter states, um, that, that would need a motion to approve through council for Sue Thompson to be on tax review board for 2019. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I move to accept Sue Thompson to the tax review board. Mr. Lowry. Any comments? No. Mrs. Burr. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Accepted 6-0. Thank you for that. I will send a letter out to Ms. Thompson, let her know that this was approved. Uh, the second motion we need tonight is for uh, Mr. Howard Kitko to be the acting clerk of council. Every year we uh, elect an acting clerk of council just in case our clerk of council cannot be present. So we need another motion for Mr. Kiko to be acting clerk of council for 2019. Council Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to uh, accept Howard Kiko as the acting clerk of council. Second. Comments? Oh, Ms. Byrne. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. <coughs> Kim. Yes. Accepted 6-0. Thank you. Uh, moving on down the city manager report, various board openings. Um, right now we have a Parks and, Recre board, Parks and Recreation Board. That has one opening. Our Board of Zoning Appeals. We also refer to them as the BZA. They also have an additional one opening. Our tax review board, that can be omitted now. So I do apologize for not taking that off. Um, I will place uh, board openings and legal ads as well as posting on Facebook, but please get the word out. If you know anyone that wants to volunteer their time, you do have to be a citizen of New Carlisle. Uh, give me a call if you'd like and I can discuss what each of these boards uh, do more in detail. But again, we do have those two openings and it's a great opportunity to give back to your community if you'd like to be on those boards. Upcoming, we have a town hall meeting. And we also have 2019 operating budget work sessions. Um, your closeout anticipate, is anticipated by uh, hopefully the uh, first or second week in February. Um, I know Debbie's still working on that with the convert software conversion. Um, so when you look down to setting, we, we're definitely going to set some work session dates, but we also need to look at the, bu the bullet point below that where it says the operating budget timeline. We are getting a, just a little bit late start due to the software conversion. Um, so depending on how council wants to approve their operating budget for 2019, you have two different scenarios. Okay, scenario one is approved by regular ordinance, and those are the time dates that we have to meet in order to do that. If you guys want to pass that uh, by emergency ordinance, it will give us a few more weeks to actually get through the budget. So um, I know emergency ordinances aren't the best sometimes, but sometimes they are a necessity. Um, but just keep in mind, if council chooses to not do uh, the emergency ordinance, we really have to facilitate just about every one of these work session dates in order to get through the whole budget because that budget does have to be approved by the end of March when that is state law. Council, any thoughts? <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. 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 Mr.
Mr. Lowry. I don't, I don't see a problem with going with the regular timeline uh, without the emergency meeting. I mean, just as long as, you know, as long as we're not wasting time, I think it should be doable. Sure. Can, my I, can I say something? Yeah, yes. My, 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 my advice is let's not set like a regular emergency ordinance. That was just really informational. We can go through these budget work session dates as they are and then see how far we progress. If we need the extra couple weeks, then we can do the emergency ordinance route. But we do need to have a summary of that budget, uh, budget published in the paper for not less than two weeks before the vote is taken. Yeah. So we have to keep that in mind. That in mind? Yeah. Now, last year's budget work sessions, I think we did three or four. They were fantastic. They were great. So maybe we can continue that trend for this year, get together, have three or four sessions, knock them out. Everyone's on the same page. We vote, we approve. And then I think that's probably the best thing to do. We did a, we did a great job last time with that. that. It was great. Do you want to, um, the dates available, those are not all, all the dates that I, we need to have one. I just put them all there so, so I can illustrate the day along with the month as well as the what day of the month it is. So Monday is February 11th, Tuesday's the 12th. Um, okay. I would say each of those we would need at least probably Two or three, to be honest with you. Monday's Mr. Mayor. Monday's good. Yeah, I'm fine with any of them. Mr. Vice Mayor. If all of members of council agrees, I think the uh, the uh, February 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th, we could probably get a lot done in those four days. Four days consecutive. Yes. The 19th, if we have to go to the following week, the 19th is also a council meeting. I'd rather forego that one and move it to Friday, which I think is the 22nd. If we need all four of those also, which I think we could probably get quite a bit done in the first four meetings. Uh, we seem to work last year. It seemed to go sure. fairly well. And I think we did it in four meetings last year, I think. You just want to talk, do the four in a row? Uh, I don't have a problem with that if, if the rest of council yeah. doesn't. Shammy has to work. Same so, as well. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I'm going to have, and with my new job, I'm going to have a lot of until 6. What, so yeah. I'd make it here like at 7.05 on Beth at best. Yeah. So I don't think four consecutive days. I mean, for you guys, yeah. the retired folk, maybe <laughs> even for two us. And two and well, Mike didn't have a problem, he said. So. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. He might get off a little well, earlier. I guess no. he's retired so what do you too. Think? Right? You Shammy. can do Mondays. And then any other days, I can adjust the schedule, but I couldn't do four days. Okay. Right. So you want to do Monday the 11th, Monday the 18th, Wednesday the 13th, and then the 14th. I'd hope we could do the uh, Wednesday the 20th. the 20th. Or with we already have a council meeting, and last time what we did was we had a council meeting, then we went into the budget session. Yeah. After. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think well, we're already here, so. And these meetings don't, you know, last too terribly long. So I think we should utilize that date too. I honestly think we can put, we can get through about three meetings. Yeah. If we just settle it down for three meetings and break it up, as long as there's not too drawn out discussion, I think it'd be good. I'd like a few days, maybe a week. I mean, not a week, but some days the buffer just in case someone wants to change something or something. But yeah. Like once that legal ad is is in, we got to do the summary. So then summary numbers have to match what council well, decided yeah. on. Yeah. So we have till the. 23rd. So does that work? Council will do the 11th, the 18th, the 13th, and then I have to figure out what the date is for our first meeting in February. Uh, um, that would be the, the fourth. 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 Is the fourth work for everyone? So did I hear uh, Monday the 11th, Wednesday the 13th? Yes. Okay. Monday the 28th. And do you guys want to do February the 4th? Does that work for everyone? That's the council meeting, right? Yeah. yeah, but we're going to do yeah. it after the council meeting, like we've done. Well, they, they yeah. can't start until the 11th. Oh, they we, can't we start until the 11th? Yeah, yeah, oh, we need to we finish it out the, here in. I need to get do the 19th. For the 19th, then. and then after the... Uh, do we have to have four meetings? We might need four. It, it, okay. So are we doing the 11th, depends. the 21st? I mean, right. I mean, 11th, the 13th. Did I hear Monday, the 2 18th? Yep. Okay. And then should we just shoot for that Tuesday after council meeting? Yeah. Since we're all here? Yep. Because we'll have a good chunk of that done by that third day. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's why we're meeting on Tuesday tonight. 
Oh, Monday. Oh, Monday the 18th. Oh, Monday the 18th, Wednesday. We're closed. That's right. It is. Which is fine. If I need to come up, I don't care about that. So Where's can we do the 20th then, or the 21st or 22nd to pick up that Monday? I mean, do we? we do you want to do it Monday or not? I yeah. Can, I mean, is the 19th, 20th okay? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Me. Oh, yep. <laughs> so we're going to do Monday the, the 11th, then Wednesday the 13th, then Tuesday the 19th, and then Wednesday the 20th. Debbie, are you good with those days? Oh, yeah. Probably should make sure she's, she's good for them, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, our finance director may want to be there for this, you know? <laughs> are you okay? Yeah, the four days, the 11th. Of, go ahead and repeat the dates, though, because you 11, 13. Yep. Uh, 19 and 20. 19 and 20. No. Okay. Gotcha. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And since we already touched the uh, operating budget timeline, I'll go ahead. Um, I had reached out to each uh, a council member. Um, I think Mr. Co Cook had talked to you, Mr. Cobb, about the Prentice Drive project. And this all transpired very late um, last week. Um, we did a Prentice reconstruction project. Um, I think the project was in 17, correct, Howie, but mm -hmm. it was 16 funds? Yes. Uh, in 2017, we did complete reconstruction of Prentice Drive. Um, that is a block grant project, okay? In that block grant, um, part of the funding can be called, be called critical infrastructure, as well as the formula funds. Um, and the critical infrastructure is a formula they use. Um, well, I got a call. Um, the state came in and audited that project, okay? and basically told the county that the formula they used for the um, critical infrastructure part was wrong and it needed to be adjusted. So basically what that does is you have X amount from critical infrastructure, which if it's high, that reduces how much the city has to put in for their contribution of the project. Since the, the critical infrastructure formula is wrong, that lowered. So that means we had to put in more for the project, okay? So right now we are on the hook for an additional $22,400. Um, I am still trying to set a meeting up with the county to get some questions answered. We do have about $21,000 and a random line item in our budget from Lord knows how long it's been in there, long as I've been city manager. And it is about $21,000 and it is under a block grant line item. So what I'm going to do is inquire if we can use these existing $21,000 in block grant funds to help pay for the new additional $22,000 for the project because it's one block grant project going to play for another block grant project. I do not know what the answer is going to be because the silver lining in this is, is we all use funds based off a given year. Those block grant funds that we've had been on the books for Lord knows how long. So they may have an issue with using funds from years past to pay for a current project. If they say yes, go ahead and use it, great. We apply the existing 21,000 we already have and then we come up with a difference and then everything's squared away. If they say no, you can't have to use that, you can't use that money we have to come up with the $22,000 to repay um, our portion of the share. Um, they can also say, and by the way, you need to send us back the additional $21,000 for the project that was never, I don't want to say never completed, maybe had excess funds for. So there's a lot of research going on. We do know that we are on the hook for about $22,400. The means of repayment and how we're going to repayment is still up in the air. Uh, but since it was such a one, out of the blue news to get on a Thursday morning, driving to work or Friday morning, no Thursday morning. You know, I didn't want to wait to let council know, I informed council all by phone and then decided to talk about it today at the council meeting. So once we have a little bit more um, solid answers and how to, we're going to repay, I will update everyone and then we will um, let everyone know how we're going to move forward with this. Um, this happens, I don't want to say it happens all the time. I know city Dayton just had to return like $620,000 for blighted structures they did not use correctly. Um, and please keep in mind that the agency that, um, I don't want to say made the mistake, but the farmer was wrong. This is an agency that has treated this city very, very, very well over the past couple of years. So I don't want to make too big of a deal of it. I want to get the answers. I want to present those to council. Then I want to just make the problem right and then move on. Um, but since it is a large dollar amount, we did want to update, update everyone. I will have an, uh, Mr. Kitko join me with the meetings. Uh, so that uh, technically does fall under his department, his projects, and he has got a great mind when it comes to that stuff. So I will be asking um, Howie to join me in those meetings as well. Fantastic. Yep. Council, any comments on that? 
Mr. Lowry. Mr. Lowry. So just to clarify, so everyone. On the same page, the state found the issue with the county and not with us. Yeah, the state audited I mean, the project. Obviously, it affects us, but it was not with us in the way we. Nope. Nothing to do with it. We didn't do the formula. We just, we, they say this is what you owe and that's what we pay. You know, we do, we do not calculate the formulas. Block grant money is, is really federal money and your, your county government is usually an extension of your state government. So the federal government um, allows the counties to distur distur distribute those block grant funds unless you are an entitlement city. We are not an entitlement city. Those are cities with much bigger populations. So um, any kind of federal funding usually gets funneled through the county. Block grant is a federal grant program. So um, as far as who sets the formulas, I don't know if that's a state thing or federal thing. But um, yeah, it wasn't, we didn't cause the issue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilor, anything else? Mr. Cobb. We're in new business, right? No, not no. no. Not I don't believe he's done with his major's report. Mr. Bridge, would you like to continue? Yep. Um, <laughs> Just moving on, we have the fire, uh, Volunteer Firefighters Dependent Fund Board. This is something we do every year. Um, we do need um, to have council appoint two members from the elected by the legislative authority to sit on the Volunteer Firefighters Dependent Fund Board. Now, who sat on last time was Mr. Cobb and Mr. Lindsay, correct? I think last so, year. yeah. Would you guys be interested in doing it again? Yeah, you guys meet so regularly. I wouldn't have a problem with it. <laughs> I don't have a problem. No. Is that all right? Need a motion? Yeah. yeah. You need a motion I for can, yourself? You I can. can't make the motion. You can too. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Cook. I will make oh. a motion that we appoint Mr. <laughs> Lindsay and Mr. Cobb. Second. Mr. Shamey, was that you? <clears throat> Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shiamy? Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. Yes. And that is it I'll have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Mr. Cobb? Mr. Bridge? Yes, sir. Can you tell me anything about the HOA at Twin Creeks and what's going on? Well, they're having a meeting tomorrow. Um, what's going on is um, hmm, they're having a problem getting um, title insurance because they are claiming they own parcels they don't own. Um, so basically, from what I understand, is the title insurance are having a problem getting. Um, they have a couple Carmen parcels out there that need to have a unanimous vote to give up. They have to vote amongst themselves to give up the ownership of those common parcels. The common parcels are trying to give up. They don't own, they don't have a title to. Um, so um, I can't really say much because it's attorney client privilege information. I will say that the city has done due diligence and bent over backwards to speed this process up. Um, but we can't do anything about them having certain things recorded. When you do these plat and you have plat, plat restrictions, you have to vote those plat restrictions in and you have to record that at the county level. City had nothing to do with that. Um, so in order for them to give away or let go of their restrictions, they have to vote on that. And they also have to vote on the common parcel. So I think it was a lot of misinformation that maybe that was not given correctly to the residents of Twin Creeks. Um, my understanding is too is that they did not know they did not own the parcels and have certain title insurance or not so I think they're learning a lot as they go along through the process as well um, what I have instructed and I'll be very honest with you I talked to Mr. Cook about this today if they cannot go tomorrow and get this resolved I am instructing the city to just end it because we have got a, we've got money invested into this um, and at some point in time, even though I hate to say it, you got to cut your losses and move on. Um, so we'll see how their meeting Thursday evening goes. I'm going to attend that meeting on Thursday. Um, I've asked Andy, our attorney, to give me a bullet point list of things that I am able to discuss if any questions do come up. But we also have to keep in mind, and this is where it gets tricky, is that they are represented by an attorney. All right, so it's hard for me to go and talk directly to 
the people he's representing. In the world of law, you don't do that. You know, so we relied on their attorney to update them as they see fit. So um, that's where we're at with it. I'm curious to see what certain people up at Twin Creeks have to say about how it's got to this point. But the bottom line is, is that the city, we can't go and say, all right, your recorded restrictions are now no longer valid. We don't have that authority. Those have to be taken back by the people who put them there in the first place. So I think they have a lot of discussion to do about how they want to move forward as a group before we get back involved and start expending money again. What I'm saying is <clears throat> we're wasting money right now playing around with HOA. Uh, when there's work being done on it, yeah. With, with the attorney. When it's being done. It's not, it hasn't been like a 24 everyday thing since. It's very sporadic. And as far as I'm concerned right there, if they can't come up with a resolved Thursdays that we walk away and it's their privy. I and they can you. turn around reposition when they get a repetition when they get everything back in order. I agree with you. But I think it needs to end Thursday night if they haven't got it straight. I agree with you, 100 percent. Now we need a motion to do that. You do not. That falls under my jurisdiction. But you see what I'm saying? We're, yeah, we're, I agree we're wasting the attorney's money or paying the attorney. They're getting stubborn on their end, mm -hmm. and all we're sitting here just throwing money out. No, I think it was going well when we started having the planning board meetings. You know, I thought we had the planning board meetings. I thought it was going to be done. And then um, we needed to do a title search. I'm not, we're not going to take parcels of land without doing a title search. So that's after the planning board meetings, I then instructed Andy, all right, start the title search process. That's not cheap. And that's when all this came back. Well, like I said, I can't say much, but they have a lot of figuring out to do on their end before they reposition themselves to us and I'm willing to play because I think it's it, it it could have been over a while ago if there was a lot of information known um, but you know and it's unfortunate we're in the situation we're in now um, but I again I will reiterate that I agree with you 100 percent the only reason I say that last year or was it, November mm -hmm. that they sit back we've got it worked out just one little minor detail well, that detail's growing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know. Well, I want you to know it has nothing to do with this end of things. We, we, we are responsive to what they give us. We respond to what they give us. So, you know, in initial things, when they're saying, we want to give you the common parcel, we assumed you own the common parcel, the common parcel that you're trying to give away. You know? So, I think that it was such a muddy thing to begin with from the inception of Twin Creeks to where we are now that it's just kind of got muddled. I think new players are involved that maybe not remember what happened the first time around. So I think it just has a longevity of being a confusing entity itself that it's now translating to where we're at now with people may not know exactly what is going on. Well, I think if they haven't done anything but Thursday night, you ought to just say we're done with walk away and if we resolve it, you can read petition. Duly noted, sir. Okay. Council, anything else? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Bridge. Yep. We're now moving on to comments from members of the public. Please limit comments to five minutes or less. Give your name and your address, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Linda Eggleston Nowakowski, 317 South Main Street. I'd like to bring to the attention of the council a problem that has uh, surfaced dramatically to me in the last couple of weeks with the bad weather. People are not clearing sidewalks. And that's not just individual residences, it's businesses. And we have a number of people in this town who get around in this town by wheelchair. And these people are being forced to go into the streets in order to be able to do what they need to do outside of their homes. We've got houses that are vacant, that are not being taken care of. And I'd like to know if there's any, is, is there any way that the city can force the issue 
and take care of those sidewalks so that these people can get around and do what they need to be able to do. Mr. Bridge, that's more, I guess, you and Howie's area. Um, that was, and I'm sorry, Linda, I was passing something on to Mr. Councilman Cobb. Um, so we have issues with people not clearing the sidewalks, and then your, the question, well, I heard vacancy, so the houses that are vacant are not being cleared either? Well, yeah, but in particular, the ones that are vacant aren't getting sure. taken care of sure. at all. But I mean, I went around the corner, one, two, three, six houses on Scott and Funston going around to the marathon and then go around to the dollar store. The dollars, the parking, I don't want to say this. There were two houses on Funston that were cleared. Mm -hmm. The marathon was cleared and nothing else was cleared. Okay. Until you got to the pull in there at the dollar store automobile. Sure, gotcha. Um, I'm sure there is a, you, we, we also do our best effort of clearing sidewalks when it snows. Um, I'm out there doing it at my house. No one likes to do it, but we all got to do it. Um, we can definitely, when we know the snowstorm's uh, snow coming, kind of put that friendly reminder out. Um, we can look. Um, the thing when it comes to violation, I don't want you to think I'm blowing it off because it's, this is a very honest discussion. When it comes to violating someone for that kind of stuff, we have to give five days for them to correct the problem. Six days, 10 days, whatever, whatever we feel is appropriate. Usually in that five or 10 days. You know, <coughs> say, Becky, you didn't, shave, you didn't shovel your, 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 your sidewalk. We give you a violation, you have five days to correct it, okay? If you don't correct it, we go in and shovel it for you, we bait it, we do the property tax. So it's, it's tough to like violate someone for that. I think that we can always, Say, hey, you know, send a letter to that house or, you know, or give them a call or say, hey, maybe you didn't think of it like this or maybe you didn't know that you're required to shovel your uh, driveway, I mean, your sidewalk or something like that. A lot of people don't know they are required to do this kind of stuff. Um, so I think there's an easy way to do it as far as sending out a courtesy letter saying, hey, this is it. But when it comes to actually sending that violation, maybe we need to do that for the repeat offenders who don't take note of the first or second round of letters. Um, and I'm like that too. I, I shovel my place and some people don't. And when you gotta walk a dog or whatever, and you have to walk through that or you have to exit the sidewalk to get on the cleared street to walk. To walk the, yeah, the yeah, it's, a, it's I, I agree with you 100%. So, I mean, is there a way that the city can make a notice and say, we would like to publicly remind all of these people that they have to do this and they have to do it properly? Oh yeah, I mean, like I said, when, when we know a snow storm's coming up, you know, as far as like taking an ad out in the paper, I'd, I mean, we could look into that. I honestly, we, I re reach way more people on Facebook nowadays, you know? Uh, so I, th we can always do a better job, absolutely. It's getting that word out. Um, and then we'll see how many people actually respond to that. But I, you got a very valid point. It's a safety issue, it's a health issue, it's mobility issues if someone has to roll themselves down. Um, and I think that we all can do a better job at taking care of our neighbors. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Peggy Eggleston, 312 South Main Street. Something happened or didn't happen at the last council meeting that really upset me. And once I got home and the more I thought about it, the more upset I got. I was born in New Carlisle, and other than for about four years, I've either lived in the city limits or within five miles of the city my entire life. I love my hometown, but the actions of the current council have been an embarrassment to me and to our town. 2018 was not a good year for the city council, most of which had to do with the mayor and the vice mayor. After looking at a breakdown of charges from our law director through, through June 30th, 2018, these two men have cost, this cost the city almost $29,000 in legal costs between their threatening to sue the city because they both admitted to doing wrongdoing to researching a conflict of interest with the mayor, whatever that might be, tax collection from an elected official, email signatures that they were told to stop using, and several other items concerning just the mayor and the vice mayor. 
That dollar amount is just legal fees through June of 2018 and does not include the estimated $15,000 that the city is going to have to pay for a special election because the mayor didn't read or understand the charter for the requirements of an appointing a new council member and didn't understand the charter requirements for calling a special meeting. At the last council meeting, it was brought up that Mr. Lindsay gave an order to the law director to research and prepare what was needed to carry weapons in city buildings, which he admitted to. This infraction has never been addressed by council regarding this violation of the charter. This, this goes against the city charter, Article 4, Section 4.07B, prohibitions, which was also read last meeting. To refresh your memories, interference by administration, by council, neither the council nor any of its members shall in any manner dictate the appointment or removal of any city of employee who falls under the jurisdiction of city manager. Council and its members shall not give orders directly or indirectly to any city employee except the city manager. Council members declared in violation of this prohibition of the charter shall forfeit their seats on council in accordance to, with section 4.08b and said seats shall be declared vacant. Such persons shall not be eligible to hold further office or employment in the city government for a period of five years. Section 4.08b that I just referred to states vacancies, the office of a council member shall become vacant upon death, resignation, removal from or forfeiture of office in a manner authorized by this charter. Forfeiture of office, a council member shall forfeit office if in the judgment of council expressed by a vote of five members, the accused lacks any time during the term of the office eligibility, basically moving out of town intentionally violates any express prohibition of this charter, has engaged in misconduct, fails to attend three consecutive meetings, accumulates three unexcused absences. Now the way I understand this, and if I'm wrong, please correct me and let me know, is that if a council member admits to giving an order to a city employee other than the city manager, they are in violation of the charter. And Mr. Lindsay, admitted that. That council member shall forfeit his office if in the judgment of council expressed by a vote of five members the accused one lacks any time during the term of the office eligibility or two intentionally violates any express prohibition in this charter. None of you said a word and none of you reacted at the last meeting. Not even oops we made a mistake. The only reaction I saw was on Facebook when a council member stated, at last night's meeting, and this is a quote, at last night's meeting, we had citizen address city a council about their concerns of actions that were taken by city council members in 2018. While I completely understand this individual's frustration and concern, I feel it's time to move forward. My personal opinion is that by moving forward is not by sweeping everything under the rug. The definition of city charter from Wikimedia. A charter is the basic document that defines the organization, powers, functions, and essential procedures of the city government. The charter is therefore the most important legal document of any city. Now I believe that when each of you ran for office, you did so with the best intent and the betterment of the city in mind. Our council members advise that the city charter defines the functions of council and the rules by which it will abide. If not, why not? How is blatantly not following our city charter, the most important legal document of any city, bettering the city? Why do we have a city charter if council can pick and choose what it wants to follow? Two council members remain on council that have committed grave violations of that city charter. I'd like to see council revisit removing these two members now that we understand that the vote is not do you support them, but did they commit the infractions which both have admitted to. Council. 
questions? I'll respond to her. Peggy, let me address the elephant in the room. In your statement and the charter, there has to be a total of five votes to remove a member of council. In the ensuing actions that you are requesting us to take, there were not five votes. Consequently, I believe that probably there were maybe three, if not four, votes to remove those two. When you remove a member of a body, you are opening yourself up for legal action. With the fact that we did not have the required votes, I personally feel that it was a waste in futility. I think this would have brought forth, even if we had removed them, additional expenses by the legal department that we could not stand. And I'll be honest with you, I was one of the ones that would have voted to remove both those people. And I think both those gentlemen know that due to the fact of the facts. Now, I do not want to see anyone removed from council. However, if the facts remain and we would have had five votes then so be it. But there are members of this council that did entertain those thoughts of removing those gentlemen. When it was evident that there were not five votes, it was a waste again in futility. If one of the council members had not said that he would not vote against either one of them, you would have had five votes to, by the fact. It's not a matter of whether you support them. It's a matter of whether they committed the actions that they were accused of. And they both admitted that they had done those acts. It's not, a, it's not a, well, maybe they didn't mean to do that. It's, did they do it? Mr. Cook. You have something you want to say back, Mr. Cook? Again. <clears throat> if either one of those two gentlemen had voted not to remove themselves, we would not have had the five votes. You already had one councilman state that he could not, hang on, could not vote for that removal. At that point, we did have seven. So you take that one out of the equation, you got six. If those two gentlemen had voted not to remove themselves, we're down to four. We don't have enough people to remove them. <coughs> we don't have the votes. If you've got six council members, <coughs> Go ahead. you've got seven, no wait, yeah, seven council members, and all of them can vote on the first person you remove. Okay, so you've got down to six. If the vote is on whether they did it, you can get rid of the first one. Okay? I understand your thought. However, I don't believe in my own mind that we had the necessary votes. If, and you, don't, if you don't have the votes, why not when they have said, yes, I did this? Sorry. Again, as a vote, as a vote is taken, whether you vote for the president of the United States or any other situation, it is a determination of your individual rights 
to how you vote. Now, I don't know what the ramifications of the rest of the council was as to whether or not they took these people to be guilty. We each have a yes or a no. Go ahead, Ron. Mr. Cap. You had Mrs. McKenzie and one other young lady, I can't remember her name, had circulated the petitions trying to recall the two of them. They failed on the getting the uh, necessary. necessary signatures on the petition. Like I say, you got six people sitting here, it winds up into a tie. I know how, okay, let's say myself, Mr. Cook, Mr. Lowry are three votes to remove them. The mayor, the vice mayor, and uh, Mr. Shammy decided to go the other way. You now have a tie vote. I, I want to know how you can vote against what the people have said. That's like me going into court and admitting in court that I killed someone and you don't convict me when I admitted it. I understand what you're saying, but I can't sit back here and tell the mayor and the vice mayor, you got to vote this way because you, you screwed up. But the charter tells them. The charter tells them that they they. But they, they still have the right to a vote. You know, we may agree. Put it up, put it up to a vote and then let the public say, what? <laughs> That was done with the uh, petitions to remove them. No, that was not done with the petitions to remove them. It wasn't? We quit. Would you like to know how many people I asked for a signature on a vote for, on a recall petition that said, can the person whose name is on this petition be seen by the people who were trying to recall? And I'd say yes, and they'd say, Matt, I'm afraid of them. I'm physically afraid of them. More than one. Mr. Cook, if I answer up. <laughs> Mr. Bowling, you, oh, Mr. Bob, you have something real fast? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. No, no, we'll continue on the subject. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, Linda, um, on your, you know, I know you guys were commenting on my post on my page after that meeting. And, and, it, and I hope you didn't take it as uh, I was disagreeing with what you were saying that night because I, I was. But, you know, I talked to people. Dale Graham actually asked me what my thoughts were on, on your comments that night. And I uh, spoke to, you know, a couple of other you know, I don't disagree with anything you're saying. I mean, I'm not going to hide it. I don't. I mean, because I was, I was one that made the motion to remove one of the individuals. But at the same time, I've also got to take legally what our city attorney, you know, is saying is the best move to do and financially. I mean, it's our job as individuals to, you know, look out for the better of the city. I'm not going to keep trying to push for something and, and spend more and more money that the city doesn't already have to do something that's just going to end in, in a, a dead end. Um, you know, I think we, you know, made efforts to do so, myself and people who aren't on council anymore. Um, but at the same time, and I'm not making light of the situation, Linda, but this is, and I'm not saying speak on the road, as far as what we can do, there's nothing else we can do. I mean, I understand what you're asking. How can someone vote? No, or move somebody when they blatantly broke the rule. I don't know. I can't answer that. Um, but, you know, this is 2019. I'm not saying it wasn't important, it wasn't wrong or right, but I, I did everything I could do as an individual counsel. Uh, you know, I'm not speaking for anyone else. And, um, yeah. if, 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 it, if the vote is to be on whether they did something or not, and they said that they did it, then the person who votes no is in violation of the charter 
herself. Does everybody, does you see that that way? I understand where you're coming from, but in the charter there is no language that addresses that. Yes, there is. I read it to you. Did they commit it? Yes. I, I think we're splitting legal hairs here. No, we're not. Uh -huh. That's where we've gotten our problem with it. Mr. Bowling, you have five minutes, sir. Do you mind saying your name and your address, please? My name's Ron Bowling. I'm with American Suncraft. I live at 108 12 Schuller Road and Midway there, uh, right off of Lake. It's right around the corner. I've got three items I'd like to bring up. The first one is I had about 10 other contractors, and I think that if I would have brought them, it would have been a mess tonight. So I might have to come like three meetings in a row because I got plenty of people can come about these issues. And one of them is Social Security for the elders. I know that you guys can't change the law, but you can stand up and talk to the congressman and other people about what these elderly people has to live for. And I'm not one of them. I am an elderly. I'm 71 years old, my birthday. But I don't need Social Security. But there is a lot of people out here that needs it, and they need it. There's a guy at work for Brock right there in Midway. He's 83 years old. He works in concrete work to put food on his table. There is no way that is right. And there's nobody here can tell me that he should have made a better plan for his life or something. Because without the roofer, without the concrete man, nobody here would have a house. Everybody would be living in a tent because everybody here cannot roof and everybody here cannot pour concrete. So that's one of my items. The next item, I've got five minutes, so I'm trying to use them up. The next one is, is how the children around here, every place, all over the United States, we just ran into an incident at right here at the, mid, the school, the middle school, a, a little girl, 12 years old. To me, she's just a little girl, a little baby. 12 years old, her grandmother got evicted for some reason, well, for sure, for not paying the bill. She's 64 years old, and she's a total wreck. I mean, she looks 84 years old if you've seen her in person. And how we found out, a teacher from the school called the office and got us involved with it. And, and by that time, the grandmother and the kids had been taken to a shelter. The shelter called Children's Services. The two kids was gone. Christmas morning, the two kids wake up down in, uh, around Cincinnati, Ohio, 12-year-old. And I thought it was a 5-year-old, but it wasn't. It's a 12-year-old uh, and a 15-year-old with a 5-year-old mind. Had a stroke when she was born, a baby. Being born, she had a stroke. So she's 15, but she's five. So the 12 year old's taking care of the five year old, too. Well, the 15 year old. And grandma, like I say, right now she broke her foot the other day and she's in the hospital up in Springfield. They did get her an apartment, but it's pretty much a dump. And we're in the process. We did get her a car and we gave her a car and we put it in her name because we don't want it in our name. But the whole point is. Why in the world didn't anybody know about it? Why in the world, the, the middle school? The board should be involved in the schools too. Do I think you can do everything? No, I don't. I mean, you can only do what you can do. But that's a very sad thing when you find the children living in that condition. A 12-year-old kid and a 15 with a five-year-old mind waking up in a foster home on Christmas morning, to me, and actually, if anybody wants to check, go to the lady at the middle school, the secretary in there. She can explain the situation, tell you more about it than me. Uh, and we're doing everything we can to get them back together and get them an apartment and everything. But the whole point is, I don't understand why. I don't understand why, not just you guys, because, but I can't understand why people went involved in things that in their own county you know, in their own school district and stuff. So that's enough of that. Second thing is the Social Security for the elderly people. Hey, if you're a roofer, don't you deserve food on your, food on your table? Because um, 
Brock, the Port, Brock Port Walls. I'm sure some of you guys know him. He's been there 40 years. Uh, he's got a guy, he works a guy, he's 83 years old, again, just to put food on his table. And again, I know that you guys can't change the world, but if people don't get up, stand up and be, and speak to our, actually, the next thing I'll go right now, I'll just get started on that. I had even Congressman Davidson at the office. The mayor knows about it. Yeah. And let me tell you what, you know what everybody tells you? They ain't got time. To, they never call you back about nothing. And what it was about was immigration. And, and I got enough, one contractor. I've only brought one contractor who's been here in New Carlisle for 25, 30 years. If you would, please look that over, because I'll be back to the next meeting next time. But I'm going to have at least eight more contractors with me. You can keep them. And I already gave you one. Yep. Please look at it over. And what it is, this is about the immigration problem. The immigration is not taking nobody's job. That's a bunch of bull crap. I got a contractor here, and I had eight others to come tonight, but I didn't bring them because I went to the city office over here, and actually I think you know I was there because the guy in there was talking to you is the one came out and talked to me about. Yeah, you're uh, talking to Howie. Okay, yeah. that's right. He knows I was there. Okay, and I called today to make sure about today, and I've actually called the mayor a couple of times because I didn't want to bring eight people in here and give them all five minutes apiece without letting you guys know ahead of time. And if you tell me tonight only bring five or six at a time, I'll bring five or six at a time. So you don't have to stay here two hours giving everybody five minutes. And you'll find out they're going to tell you guys the same as they did Congressman Davison. And I voted for him the last two times. But if he don't change, I'm definitely not going to vote for him the next time. So, and the whole point is, if you read that about the immigration stuff, we could put, we could double our business tomorrow if we could get work. When President Bush got out, when they was in there, and I, I bet you anything, not one of you guys know this. Does anybody there know what, the, what your procedures were to get a work permit for a person? Nobody. Congressman Davidson didn't know it neither. A congressman that don't know that, well, the procedure was you had to run an ad in the newspaper. And please forgive me, I don't mean to be bent out of shape, but I do get bent out of shape. I'm not an educated person. No college or no nothing. I lived in 700 square feet with 13 of us, which was half the size of this room I grew up. For a sandwich, if we were hungry, it was a slice of bread with an onion on it. And if we were lucky, some pinto beans, too. So I know what that is. I'm not in that shape today, and I thank God for it. He's brought me up. I don't need Social Security. But there are people that does need Social Security. There's children that needs a home. They need somebody that loves them enough to tuck them in the bed at night and give them something to eat. But anyways, going back to the immigration problem, and I know my five minutes is up. I gotta hurry and give him a chance. But um, Brock, Ford Walls, when he's here, he'll be here the next time. He used to have uh, five crews. You know how many crews he's got now? One crew, and he has a hard time keeping help for that. We could double our business tomorrow if we could get workers. When President Bush was in there, you could get a work permit. First thing you had to do, you had to run an ad in a newspaper with 500,000 uh, issues daily, which at that time it was the Dayton Daily News. The Dayton Daily News ain't even that big now. You'd have to go to the Columbus News or Cincinnati newspaper. So the whole point was, and everybody, if anybody answered the ad, they got first choice. The call did not come to you, so you couldn't lie, you couldn't cheat, you couldn't do anything. It went to the unemployment service. The unemployment service would call you and set up arrangements for the meeting for that person to come in. Well, the point is today, you can't get nobody. Nobody wants to work. You tell them, and actually you're gonna be really surprised if some of the people I bring in here, some of them. And today, if you say, I belong to the old house, uh, drug-free workplace, they pick the paper up, they walk out the door. You say, we, if it rains Monday and Tuesday, we work sometimes Saturday and every once in a while on Sunday. I don't work the weekend, Friday night's party night. 
You hear all of that bull, and you're going to hear it from a lot of contractors, and I'm going to sit down and get out of your hair right now <laughs> and let this contractor right here. Yeah, I'm Ben Sanford. I live on Cass and Carlisle Road. And uh, I've lived, well, basically in this area for 45 years. And I used to have, like today, like Ronnie, three, three crews. And, uh, you know, work was, you could, with a small contractor to do the due diligence and put money into people and employment. It's really hard to do, you know, and then have them leave because, you know, now it's not that. It's like, say, just finding somebody you need to apply for the job. So I don't know how we fix that because the work ethic, I don't know if the call is get so much assistance and people have been drugs, they can't pass the test. So it's really hard to build a business as a small individual, non-union, you know, and which is fine. But, you know, for some, you try to create employment for people. And it's, it's really hard in this country more because it seems like if you mention work, uh, they want a part of it, you know what I mean? And when, you, when it is hard work and you work in the elements, it's a whole different world, you know? You don't have the paid holidays, per se, as, you know, as the federal employees and, and such. So it makes it real difficult to build a business. And we would like to do that. And I thought I was doing well, you know, and slowly, you know, people fall off and, you know, then, you know, like I say, you try to replace them. It's, it's really almost impossible anymore. To, if you mention work, if, if, you know, they pretty much, <laughs> and they'll, that, if, you, if you suggest what they do and try to teach them, they'll just tell you what they're not going to do. It's not about what they want to do or, or to provide for yourself. I was always self-sufficient. You know, nobody ever helped, you know, you do things, you know, and it's hard. It's not easy, but it's a, it's a road that you chose to take without, you know, college, everybody thinks college, well, there's more to life in college, you know, and there's a lot of college people that can't get work. Now, maybe better now so than, you know, over the years, but uh, they've done jobs that they're not even qualified to do. They've, they've got an education for a better jobs, but, you know, they chose because they weren't available. But for the working person that has a small business, it's, it's literally impossible almost to build a business. I admire people that can, but to, to get, you don't have no help, it's hard to get funds to do anything. You know, from the state, uh, you just don't qualify. You're kind of, kind of in limbo there. You know, to to get assistance and help small business administrate. You know, there's just so many obstacles that you, an average person, cannot afford to take time to do or have the personnel to apply for a lot of these things. And and knowing this is half the battle. You know, it's what you don't know costs you. You know, the things. And that's what about education, the people to. I guess uh, look into these situations. It's it's tough, but I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Any other comments from members of the public? Mr. Graham, do you mind giving your name and your address, please? <coughs> Dale Graham, one fourteen South Main Street. I don't think this council grasps the gravity of the situation. We've had several residents of the city express concerns about two council members who have no regard whatsoever for the law, for the document that governs their activities. One of your tasks is to pass ordinances, laws for the city. You expect us to obey them, and for the most part, we do. How can you have the audacity to expect us to obey your ordinances when you do not obey the document that defines what you are and are not allowed to do. An honorable person, when something like this would, would, would be brought up, would resign their position. So I'm calling now on you, Bill Lindsay, you, Ethan Reynolds, to resign your positions do the honorable thing. If you refuse to do so, then you are worthy of no respect whatsoever from anyone in this city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments from members of the public? Hearing none, Mrs. Burner. Okay, moving on to our resolutions, we have one intro and action this evening. 
Resolution 19-03R, Introduction, Public Hearing and Action Tonight, a resolution revising the New Carlisle City Council Rules of Council. Council. Did you have something, Bill? I'm sorry. No. I was just going to touch base on the con. Uh, I apologize, forget your name, sir, on the, the contractor out there. Um, I think the whole uh, job George thing, I mean, obviously, it's a, something you see across the board, whether it's, I mean, whether it's skilled trades or you know, electricians, plumbers, welders, I mean, uh, you know, uh, and, and we've got pretty good paying jobs and benefits. And it's, it's just so, I mean, even jobs are paid great, it is hard to find people with those jobs. It's like, it's, it's mind blowing, I don't understand it. And then the jobs that, May not pay quite as high, but still, still, still trade is something you're always going to need. I mean, you're always going to need blowers and heating and air guys and uh, things like that, electricians and plumbers. And there's just such a big shortage of them, which I don't understand because it's a, it's a good school for it's not really, really expensive, but uh, if it, it's a fairly good paying job, you have to fall through it. I mean, I have you know, my nephew, my nephew's a heating and air guy, they're really good at it. So, but, but yeah, I, I, feel, I feel what you're saying. We know a lot of, I think, the self respect. Attorneys 
So if you read about it, you gotta be you gotta treat people right. You gotta treat them children going to the school right here. Right. You gotta treat the elderly people right and what you're making them live on because of whatever. They deserve food on their table. Them four children deserve a father. Especially when the father's got recommendations like he does from two of the biggest engineering firms in the country on water powers. So and I know for sure there ain't nothing you guys can do as an individual except stand up and be heard from when it comes to the congressman. When it comes to, I called the congress, I had him at the office. And he looked at a lot of the people like they were crying the truth until the, um, the, the county man stood up and said, yep, that truck assigned there at Brock's, been out there for 10, 15 years. I drive past it every morning going to work. I drive past it every evening coming. And actually, the next meeting, I'll have the county guy here. And then Brock, I mean, the congressman, David, said, oh, his eyes up like, mm. He didn't believe it at first. You could tell it by his face. And some of the contractors that's going to be here, too, when he left, they started laughing because they could see the difference in his face when that happened. And I'm not criticizing Congressman Davidson either. I'm saying that people need to open their eyes up and check. And you explain, please take time to read that. And you please explain to me why in the world that they reported him. With his background, with his record, with the recommendation he had from two of the largest engineering firms in the country, what a pleasant person he was to work with, because he was the one that ran the crew. He was the one that dealt with the engineers daily. You know, so, and same thing like Dennis said, you can't get people, you, uh, and you're going to hear that from Brock, you're going to hear that from the, uh, yeah, a lot of them, I overlook it now, but, and the only thing you can do is the same thing I can do, is stand up and try to be heard of. Go before your congressman, call Congressman Davidson and, and say, hey man, you know, you tell me, okay, back to Social Security, why does Mr. a congressman Mr. deserve 10, just one second. I'll give you two more minutes, all right? Go yeah, ahead. two more minutes. Why does a congressman deserve over $10,000 a month and that roofer that busted his butt work, put the roof on the house for 20 degree weather, and if you ever get out of 20 degree weather and climb up on your roof and sit down, you'll know what he went to. Or, or the concrete man that worked out the 95 degree temperature, or in our case, the guy that did the water tower, he did the water tower, because if that was a water, wasn't a water tower in the city, nobody in here would have water, would they? Nobody in the city would have water. That guy, when they work on that water tower that's 90 degrees, please take time to go inside that tank for a minute. Because it's going to be 110 or 15 in there. You know, I mean, why can't we just take time to look at other people? And like I say, I don't need Social Security. Because it ain't going to hurt me. But what about the people in this area? What about the children at the school? What about this and what about that? Why can't we take time to look at other people's lives and see what they deserve? Because they deserve, that 12-year-old girl deserves anything like children deserve. And have I worked hard in my life? As this contractor here and as a bunch of others came in here. I've been working since I've been 14 years old full time. The first until uh, I got 16 got the car, I rode a bicycle from Valley Street to Centerville and worked for Swingo Homes. I worked eight hours a day, even going to school. I left school at lunchtime and rode the bike to Centerville. 17 miles, if you need to know how, each way, and I never was late. So, and I'm not complaining about it. I thank God that I was able to do it, and I thank God I am where I am now. I don't live in 700 square feet anymore with 13 people. I live in 5,200 square feet with two children and a wife. Thank you so much. Now, back on to our resolution. Is there a motion to accept it? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Move to accept resolution 19-03R. Lindsay and Larry. Mm -hmm. Can you second that, Mike? Mike did, yes. 
Uh, explanation is uh, every year council has to uh, review their rules of council. And if there's no edits, they put it into a resolution and pass said resolution. All right, council, any questions on the resolution? Hearing none, Mrs. Burner. All right, Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. No. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Motion accepted, 5 1. Fantastic. Ordinance, is there are none tonight? Other business? Mrs. Byrne, do you want to read that? Sure. For us? Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. There will be an intergovernmental meeting Monday, January 28th, 2019 at Smith Park Shelter House. The meeting begins at 6.30. Um, executive session, there is none. And council anything for other business? Oh, 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 sorry. Yes. Go ahead. We haven't had the motion yet. Uh, I don't know if anyone noticed, and I just wanted council's blessing. On the bottom of each resolution or ordinance, I would like to put this little vote tally. I don't know if you guys saw that in here or not. Um, that way, when we look through the ordinance book, we have this right here, and we know how it was voted. I will continue on doing the Excel vote count on Excel sheets and mail them to you. But for reference-wise, I would like to see if that's okay to keep on moving forward. And I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Mayor. Sorry. Mr. Lowry, thank you for being such an efficient individual. <laughs> You're, You're welcome. Very good. Um, Mr. Lowry. <laughs> <laughs> we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>